And then, of course, on Sunday, United played Liverpool, which is an absolute failure of a game. We ended up losing 3-1, as everyone expected it to be. But I think the, the disparity in quality, the disparity in effort, and just overall team performance was so frightening to see for most United fans that it was a bit of a wake-up call for the board, which then led to yesterday's news that Reno got fired, which was... Um, incredible honestly um something that caught me kind of guard i wasn't expecting i wasn't expecting it i was um i think a lot of people kind of had the assumption that we were only going to fire Mourinho when it was mathematically impossible we were going to finish on top four but i think uh the overall morale of the team and the idea that we were going to wait that late in the season until it was mathematically impossible because i think you know the top five top six is quite quite close as a, a apart from the top two teams i think you know everyone else is quite close so it would have gone down to the wire it would have gone quite late in the in the in the season for us to be mathematically impossible which then would have kind of it's essentially written off the season but i think now with you know with the second half of the season coming up we've got five we've got five or so games coming up which, which we on paper sh could win if we we're on form i think it's worth a punt to maybe get rid of Mourinho, uh get that new manager a bump and then kind of hopefully hope that the atmosphere around the team is going to improve us because I think Liverpool showed, that game in Liverpool showed that even though Liverpool are a better team than us, I think if you look at that starting eleven, even just look at the bench even, I think we had even a stronger bench in terms of player ability, right, quote-unquote. I think if you look at our team sheet compared to Liverpool's, I think it's quite comparable. They, they're not like, they're not, it's not like a Man City, they're not like leaps and bounds ahead of us in terms of squad quality and depth. I think for the most part, Liverpool and United are probably on the same level, but Klopp has been able to get so much out of the players he has available. He's been able to sprinkle them in with some quality too, in terms of Fabinho, in terms of Virgil van Dijk, in terms of Keita. He's been able to add some quality, but for the most part, this, the spine of that, of that club, the main structure of that club is fairly decent, right? It's not that way ahead of, of United so I think that kind of contrast really made the board decide you know what time to get rid of Mourinho and in general anyway I think he just did such a poor job I think especially recently that it was he's got really he's got really no excuses I think for the most part we haven't we didn't we never saw the Mourinho side uh the, the signature Mourinho side we never really saw it at United right he was always known for being pragmatic and being um and kind of always uh, valuing defense over attack for the most part, and but for them, but we didn't really see him build a defense, a title winning defense that could contour, that could kind of uh, you could attribute to his home to Mourinho. The defense was always the shakiest part of our team. Um, he didn't necessarily get the goals or the attack wise down, apart from maybe the start of the last season. And it kind of all kind of deteriorated when then he started picking fights with the boardroom, started picking fights with the players. And it just never got better after that. And um, some could argue that, you know, his experience at Real Madrid has always kind of burned him for the most part. And it was kind of the first real time he failed at like a big marquee club. And players kind of questioned his um um, his, his methods of getting things out of players, right? Because I think uh, quite famously, a lot of the Real Madrid fans weren't really happy with how he tried to uh, instill the siege mentality in Real Madrid, tried to make uh, the players believe that they were playing for a small club and everyone, everything was against them when it was kind of, you know, when that wasn't the truth at all. Most of the Liga fans that watch La Liga will know that, you know, Real Madrid get a lot of favorable decisions from officials. They have, the, they have an array of talent that is like, you know, uncomparable to some other clubs. So the idea that he was going to go in there and pretend like, you know, he was managing Nottingham Forest and try and get an us against them attitude. The players weren't really feeling it. Plus the players he was managing had won World Cups, did won European Cups, did won Champions League before he got there. So they weren't necessarily that enamored with his personality, his cult of personality, right? Uh, they already won things. So they needed a kind of probably a different kind of manager at that time. He picked too many fights. Ika Casillas, Sergio, Sergio Ramos, Cristiano Ronaldo, all were fight, public fights that he had. And in general, he lost his job and that kind of maybe burned and wrangled him. And then by the time we got him at United, I think we probably got him a season or two too late. I think he probably should have been a manager we got after Sides Ferguson. I think that would have worked better because he had he, he would have had a team of experienced players before because I don't think Mourinho, I think as it's been proved, I think he's probably aware of this too. He just doesn't have the patience or the ability to rebuild a club. He's not, he's not a Pochettino. He's not going to do that. What he can do really well is he can come in with a three-year window and sign a bunch of 28 uh, year olds and plus and kind of get you titles and win you trophies he could definitely do that for sure especially if you've got a club that's already got the structure in place you've got a director of football you've got a football director you've got scouting networks you've got that things in place so you can he can just come in and manage the personalities inside the dressing room and tactically get them in shape and kind of you know and get some big marquee players in there that can kind of make the difference and you're done that's essentially what his inter milan side was with etu and all those guys right he had a solid defense that you could you know pepper would pepper would shot 
across all day long and you would never score. And then he had lethal uh, forwards up front that will punish you on the first instance. So uh, without that, he's not really going to be a success. And I think United was just too much of a job to do. He had to get rid of dead wood that were on... Because we were probably... We, we've got that one of the highest wage bills, I think, in Europe, right? But for the most part, it's not because we've got, like, amazing players. It's because we always give players contract extensions. We never let players, we never let players go. We always try and retain players on long, or we always kind of trigger contract extensions or renewals. So he had to get rid of Deadwood. He had to get rid of players who are signed for a lot of money and a lot of other players, other clubs wouldn't want to necessarily pay. He had to try and get new players in. It was just a harder job to do than it actually seemed like it. And I think he had to fix too much in the short period of time that he was going to be there. And then he had to pick, he had battles that he would have picked. He had the board, boardroom struggles. It just wasn't going to work out. So that was kind of, that's kind of over and happy that's kind of done. Um, he's obviously laughing to the bank because supposedly the story goes, he's got anywhere between 10 million to two, 22 million payout um, ahead of time, which is fucking nuts. I think football is the only industry in the world, right, where you can fail at something and you can still become a multimillionaire, right? Like, Imagine the amount of money David Moyes must have got for failing at his job within the first eight months of his contract. Like, it's insane, isn't it, football? Like, you can fail at something and you can still become a multi-millionaire. Like, no other job does that to you. Maybe except for the banking industry, uh, maybe it might do that, right? Where you kind of get rewarded the more sleazy you are in that regard or the more back or the more, the more you the more you go through back channels, the more kind of you get rewarded, like high risk, high reward sort of thing. Um but also the the bonuses are quite outlandish, aren't they? Like you hear people get like three hundred million dollar at uh, what you get bonuses at the end of the year and stuff, and you're wondering like what do you, did you actually do? Like you know what I mean? Anyway, um, so yeah, that chapter's over, and now it's been confirmed that uh, so Oligan Social is taking over on a temporary basis. It's a bit weird how he's taking over. I think maybe we're taking some examples from the Spanish clubs. Um, what Real Madrid done recently. So what's happening is now is that we've got interim manager. No, we've got caretaker managers. No, we've got interim. We've got so. Mourinho got fired, and now Carrick and McKenna are taking over with, for the club for the next two days, right? Doing uh, taking over training, and then uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to take over. His first game is going to be, I think, on Saturday or Sunday against Cardiff, the, the club he actually got famously fired from because they got they got they went down to uh, they got relegated when they came up a couple of a few seasons ago. And then after he's and then he's going to be here for six months, and then in May we're going to hire a new manager. A kind of permanent fixture manager who everyone's kind of thinking is going to be Pochettino or Zidane or something along those kind of lines. So it's a bit strange. It's like you're going through three essential managers in a way. But I guess the reason why that's happening is because for the most part, Carrick and McKenna are going to be part of United's coaching staff overall. They're going to be in. They're going to be still at the club in various guises, whether they're going to be uh, managing the reserves on the under 19s or something along those kind of lines. So I would guess that's why they want to keep them on board because usually when managers get fired, the whole kind of coaching staff gets chucked out the door too. But it seems as if they want to keep those two guys on board, and I'm assuming they've got quite a good relationship with the players. And then Social's going to come in for to give the kind of club a bit of a good feeling bump a little bit, uh, kind of you know get people on board, uh, maybe inspire some confidence in some players who haven't been performing and then the hope is a new manager then can build on that kind of uh, upsurge and then kind of progress and take things forward a little bit um, I guess Solskjaer for the most part has to kind of deal with the Pogba issue because of course you know the issue came out with Pogba where um, when Mourinho got announced he was fired and that kind of Instagram tweet went out where he was saying caption this whereas you know I think that the um, a person with like a person that's worked in social media, who's worked in kind of online marketing, will know. Uh, looking at the hashtags, looking at the time that post went out, that that was a timed or scheduled post that was done on behalf of the brand. It wasn't something that Pogba had control over, and that's just something that we were aware of because we saw pictures of Pogba and Dybala doing a photo shoot in Paris for Adidas a couple of a day ago or so, where they were wearing the same tracksuit and shit. So we know that they were already doing some sort of promo for Adidas, so it wasn't a surprise when that picture came out. Obviously, the timing was a bit unfortunate, but these things happen, right? Someone forgot that that scheduled post was still on there, and it went out. Uh, scheduled post, for the most part, you don't get reminded that scheduled post is going to go out. It just goes out, and you have to kind of go back on it all the time. And, of course, people read more into it because Pogba's got a strange relationship with Mourinho, but I don't really see the problem with it, to be honest. I think if you're Pogba and you do feel as if, like, like Mourinho's been a dick to you, right? You feel as if Mourinho's kind of made an issue out of you out of nothing because if you look at it really and you analyse the issue that's happened for, for the most part, probably yes, his performances have been a bit shit on the pitch, but he's not done anything off the pitch that would um, encourage or that would tell you that he's not taking football seriously or that he's kind of uh, taking the piss out of the manager. He hasn't really come out publicly and said anything. He's for, I think that I, I, the only comments I've heard him say was that, you know, if I say anything, um, the manager would kill me or I'm not allowed to say something to the press. So he, for the most part, he was quite quiet. He, I think he mentioned, I think, about we need to attack more 
right? Um, which I think Mourinho didn't take too well to, but he hasn't necessarily been saying anything that Mourinho would say to him. Mourinho has been the one kind of really going at him from the moment that World Cup ended. He kind of insinuated that the only reason why Pogba played well was because he was around, uh, he was in a camp that only concentrated on football. He kind of made an assumption that when he's only concentrated on football, he plays better. Which means that you know when he's distracted, aka when he's in Manchester, um, that's when he plays the worst. So he was kept throwing darts, throwing bullets at him, um, constantly, constantly kind of poking at him, and you know he's responded. I don't think that's anything bad around it. It might be in bad taste. It might be whatever it may be. If I believe that's true, I don't believe it is true. I think in general it was a mistake. It was a scheduled tweet. But even if he did it on purpose, I don't really see the issue of it. I think you should be allowed to give your managers back some sticks, especially if they're out of a job. Like he's gone now. He can't. There's nothing he can do anyway. But I think um, Solskjaer is going to be have to really get that. In, uh, under grips because Pogba is a player we should build a team around but he should be also know that you know there are limits to uh, how much we should be accommodating of him if he isn't able to kind of knuckle down and work hard and really show what he's because he's there's a player there we saw it against we saw it with France in the World Cup but frustratingly he didn't put any colour in his hair he didn't have any funny designs and which was on purpose I think as well generally what he did there or maybe he just didn't have a bit to bring a barber with him to Paris I mean to Russia maybe the manager got a bit tight with that shit I don't know um, but we saw that he he made a constrained effort to keep his game very simple and we saw the rewards of it. we saw how influential he was in that game I know some people are saying he wasn't that great in the World Cup Craig Bellamy for sure said that a couple of times in Sky Sports videos I've watched but I think he did really well he played amazing well very very disciplined for someone that everyone keeps saying is ill-disciplined and doesn't keep his position well he played incredibly incredibly well of course he was con- complimented by a whole bevy of fucking uh, incredible midfield talent around him but he played incredibly well and there's a real player in there so we want to see that United so hopefully Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can kind of get him on board and kind of settle that down. It'd be interesting to see what he's going to do with Lukaku and Martial and Rashford up front and Sanchez will be back fit. What kind of formation will uh, Solskjaer prefer? Will he want a 4 4 3? Will he want a, a target man in, in, up front? Will he go unconventional and play a false nine? I'm interested to see what he's going to do there. I'm interested to go do in midfield. Will he continue playing for Matic and Fellaini? Uh, even though they've both been quite poor. Fellaini because he's just not good at football. But he's been trying his heart out, don't get me wrong. But he's just not good enough for United in that level. Uh, Matic because he's kind of over the hill and has been for the most part. But he's only been playing because he's Mourinho's favourite. So I'm interested to see what he's going to do there. What he's going to do with the defence. Like Loads of interesting questions are going to come in there. Which are going to set the kind of groundwork for the next uh, manager to start again in May there is a possibility he probably might get the job anyway if he does a good enough job right if he f- imagine he does the impossible and wins the Champions League and gets us top four at the same time right you probably might keep the job right there's a possibility of that he might be keep the job in general or he might just ride into sunset because I think that's what Di Matteo did right he, he came in as an interim manager won the Champions League and then quite quickly after that this new season started he kind of was a bit of a failure and then kind of got fired straight away so it might be quite a good idea just to kind of come in if you do with the Champions League just leave anyway do you know what I mean? And, and then you kind of set the impossible target for the next manager coming in. So like what Zidane did, right? When he won, uh, uh, is it two consecutive uh, Europa Leagues? I mean, Champions Leagues with Real Madrid? And he just left after that. He didn't, he, do you know what I mean? Like, nah, fuck, fuck. There's nothing more I can do after this uh, for the most part. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens next. 